हाई टू ऑल ग्रीटिंग्स टू ऑल अगेन माय नेम इज विक्रम नीलगट्टी टुडे वी गोना डिस्कस अबाउट डेवलप हाउ टू डेवलप एन आईओटी प्रोडक्ट फ्रॉम कॉपर स्टिक टू गोल्ड बार सो वी हैव ए प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट साइकिल इफ यू वांट टू डेवलप एन आईओटी प्रोडक्ट वी नीड टू डू इन द मॉड्यूल वाइज first we need to go for hardware and the second time we need to go for the software once the two things done if you want to store the data that coming from the hardware to the cloud and the user interface if you want to take the website or android app and then we need to test all the four modules once is done we go for the deployment in bulk manner pcb fabrication once it done packing with user manual and etc and then we go for the marketing this is how the different modules we have to develop and iot product so first we go with an hardware product in hardware uh, how the iot works means with help of a sensors microcontrollers and the actuators so with the sensors we can able to take the input from the environment once that take to the environment in the microcontroller we process that and based upon the sensor value we will trigger the actuator that may be light or fan or thing and if you want take that values to the internet uh, we will uh, Uh, connect that to the Wi-Fi, and from the Wi-Fi, the sensed values will go to the cloud. So inside the cloud, the data will be processed, and we can able to take the decisions. Uh, so uh, let me uh, go for uh, what kind of hardware tools we require. We require sensors to take the input. We require microcontrollers to process the uh, data that coming from the input, and actuators whenever the sensor values. Uh, we can able to trigger the actuators based on the sensor values then we require a wifi uh, where we can able to connect the things to the internet then we require some cloud to store the data then we needed power issues power issues means uh, every sensor has a different uh, uh, power uh, that may require 5 volts or 12 volts or more than that 220 volts is the real time supply how you will supply the power so related to the power issues then connections how you will connect uh, input input to process and process to output what will be the connection in that and how you will connect the wifi to the internet cloud so we deal with the connection issues as well and then uh, we need to assemble all the components on the pcp to make a prototype this is all the hardware components we require first we will see about the sensors what are the sensors we require uh, the sensors are developed the, from the basic idea of the sense organs that human being has so we have a sense organs like eyes ears nose uh, tongue and touch sensor skin so from that we have a various type of sensors like seeing sensors smell are a gas sensors touch sensors hear are a mic sensors uh, taste sensors so with the help of this idea the sensors are uh, variously divided so this way we have many sensors uh, like here where you can able to see the moisture level from the soil and where you can able to sense the temperature thermostat and humidity levels uh, like that we can able to sense the uh, values from the environment intensity of the light so that based upon the intensity of light we can switch on switch off the fan uh, like this we can take many input from the sensors and second part is a microcontroller microcontroller is a processing unit this is the arduino family uh, with the help of a arduino uh, and with this is a node mcu mm, so these two are the microcontrollers so what is the difference between this uh, node mcu and arduino means if you, this is inbuilt wifi shield is there that is the esp uh, 8 to 6 is wifi shield is there with this microcontroller whereas if you want to go to here some arduino is with uh, wifi otherwise you need to use extra wifi shield to add here uh, this is the arduino nano uh, generally i use the arduino nano and the node mcu with bluetooth i go for arduino nano and for the node mcu i go for the wifi and etc connectivity so these are the processing devices so sensors are the input devices and microcontrollers are the processing devices so you can go for microprocessor as well this is the pi raspberry pi Uh, what is different between microcontroller and microprocessor means microcontroller is a specific uh, uh, specific purpose whereas microprocessor is a generic purpose uh, in a ac elevator escalator uh, washing machine where we will use the microcontroller there in a computer cpu etc we have the uh, microprocessor so even in iot as well we can use microcontroller or microprocessor based upon our requirement we need to choose that is a microcontroller or microprocessor 
so this was the processing part like brain in our human body next the actuators so when you want to trigger based upon the sensor values if the intensity light intensity is low the light should get on if the uh, temperature is changing the automatically the ac should get up and down so based upon the sensor values the microcontroller will process and trigger the actuators so this will act as an output when we need to switch on the light or fan or motor or greaser or etc etc stuff can be done with the actuators so these three are the basic requirement to develop an any iot product that is the sensors microcontroller or microprocessors and actuators next if you want to connect that thing to the internet we need to use a wifi router there's a dlm card other any core product so that where you can able to connect that thing to the wifi so with this we can able to have the ip address and the mac address so easily we can able to uh, trace it out the each and every thing that connected to the internet so with the help of the internet we take the sensor values and we take the actuator values to the cloud so cloud is uh, where we will store the values once we store the values we can able to download the data in the form of csv as well and by using the deep learning and machine learning algorithms we can able to analyze the data so that easily we can able to take the appropriate decisions so in the cloud part we have uh, uh, we can use a, our server or we can use a third part server based upon our usage we have many clouds with google ibm uh, many other vendors so you can able to use it out so you need to have uh, cloud as well for storing purpose uh next we deal with the power issues in power we may need low to high or high to low how we really deal with that kind of issues means uh we may have low to high or high to low uh we may use these three things if you want to generally the microcontroller microprocessor will supply the power uh, 5 volts so uh, input and output need to connect to the microprocessor so if is a microcontroller or microprocessor means uh, we have in this pin data pins to this data pins we will sensor also have a uh, data pins like a ground pin and like a vcc pin here as well we have vcc ground etc etc pins we have d not a not a1 like that we have various types of data pins in the microcontroller microprocessor to this data pins we need to connect the uh, actuator or the uh, sensors we may have a data pin we may have ground for every sensor we have a ground and vcc so ground pin will be connected to the ground vcc pin will be connected to the vcc uh, like this so that uh, we will do the connections here but when this sensor will work this require a microcontroller microcontroller require 5 volts to switch on similarly some sensor may require 3 volts some sensor may require 12 volts so how you supply the voltage if you directly connect this 3 volts to this 5 volts means the power is very more at that time we need to give a low low power to here so we need to reduce 5 volts to 3 volts so how you can reduce 5 volts to 3 volts means you need to use the resistors and how you can increase the 5 volts to 12 volts means at that time you need to go for some uh, transistors so the transistors and resistors will play a very major role to uh, do with the power dealings with high to low and low to high but whereas coming to in the real time we have the 220 volts how you can able to operate the 220 volts at 110 volts means with the help of a relay we go for that one this is the bunch of the transistors this is a relay module so with the help of this relay module we can able to deal with uh, real time loads like light fan in our uh, home so this how we will deal with the uh, power issues so we need to make sure that before connecting any sensor how much power it is required and uh, how we need to supply it out whether we need to Uh, supply 5 volts means how to do 12 volts how to do 220 volts we need to use the appropriate hardware to select it out then how we will connect it out we will connect to the pins as i said before we in the microprocessor we have a, a pins so to the data pins we will connect each and every uh, input actuators and the sensors and to do the prototyping how we will do means we will use a breadboard so in the breadboard we will connect all the sensors for the experimental purpose before doing the putter type there we will use some jumper cables this is the pins we have and we will use the tracks at the time of the uh, doing the bulk uh, many pcbs if once the prototype get ready the product is working successfully then we go for the bulk order at the time we go for the printed pcb there we call as a tracks this is the tracks with the help of the tracks jumper cables pins we used to uh, do the connections of a in an iot product see 
we have various pins here vcc out ground and here as well we have v in vcc uh, ground etc so ground will be connected to the ground uh, vcc will connect to the vcc and this output will be connected to the any of these data pins like this we will connect the uh, sensors or actuators with the help of the pins and when the breadboard will connect to the pins male to female or female to male or male to male female female connectivities to these pins and we will test it out in the uh, prototype once we test is done prototype done then final task is to do the pcb fabrication this is how the printed pcb will look look this is how the product will be done after completion of this product we will put this in the casing part uh, this is how we need to uh, do hardware part very perfectly uh, next we go for the second thing uh, software uh, module how we will design a software once you get design all the hardware with uh, a circuit diagram and uh, all the things uh, connections power everything supply we feel very happy then we go for the software how it's really work the hardware alone cannot work we need to do some programming in out so we go for the software thing so where we do the software means with the help of a software called arduino ide so with the help of an arduino ide we will do the software uh, so this is how the arduino ide uh, we call this as a sketch we want to call it as a program we call this as a sketch so whenever you it is a free and open source it's a open source so easily you can able to go to the arduino website and you can download this website uh, this software once you download install it out once you install you can able to see the uh, window like this and you have in the file menu we have examples you go to the blink so this is the blink program if you see in the program it's sketch arduino sketch in arduino sketch we have two functions one is the setup function another one is the loop function so for any program we have these two functions in the setup function what we will do is we will set the pin modes pin mode 13 comma output whether you connected how many inputs uh, to which data pins how many outputs to which data pins everything will go in the setup function whatever the code you put in the setup function will be uh, executed only once whatever you put in the loop it will execute repeatedly so you should be very clear before doing the sketch where you need to put the uh, code which code you need to put in the setup and which code you need to put in the loop like that easily we need to uh, do it out and this pin mode will you say this is the input or output and this digital read if you want to read the uh, data from the digital sensor you need to go for digital read if you want to write digital write analog means analog read or analog write like that based upon our requirement we need to use this programming part we do in this Arduino sketch so once you do the programming uh, done in the Arduino sketch you can see the symbol here tick mark this is how the compiling will work it checks uh, whatever the code you have written is correct or wrong uh, if it is wrong we can able to modify it out and check it out once it get clear then you need to upload the program here before uploading the program you need to be very clear that you need to go to the tools and you select the appropriate microcontroller that where you want to upload the programming that may be arduino or that may be an arduino cu whatever you clearly select in the tools and you select the com4 where you connected to your computer once done that you upload the uh, program to that microcontroller and apart from arduino uh, components like node mcu is not belongs to arduino family it's separate one if you want to work with separate microcontrollers apart from arduino family then you need to install the corresponding library in the file preferences and tools and then you install the arduino library board manager go to the tools board manager and you select the appropriate url and you install the particular library of that microcontroller then you click on the upload button so this is how we will code and we will upload the program once the software and hardware done uh, we need to check it out whether the hardware is responding based upon our software code or not uh, so let me go with one example uh, lpg gas detector uh, the input here will be a uh, LPG gas sensor uh, and the output will be here is a buzzer so for this we require uh, locally we can able to connect this thing locally means you no need to send the values to the cloud or etc etc inside our home in the kitchen we used to place this sensor from the kitchen if there is there any uh, gas leakage sensor gas leakage occurs then in a, in a room in a living room or in our room it will rings the alarm that's the locally uh, we are doing this task so we will connect this to the uh, microcontroller processing on the brain so these pins we will connect the pins like this to the nano to the all three pins ground and thing this will connect to these pins once you connect all these pins 
this will work perfectly for the locally whenever the gas leakage occurs this alarm will get rings so we will do the programming uh, pin mode two pins one for input other pin is output and we will write if input value is greater than one then it will be alarm like that easily we can able to do the programming and how we can do the globally globally we need to do connection of internet how you can do means we need to go for the cloud this is how uh, clearly we can able to do the uh, thing so next if you want to go to the globally what we need to do means next module will be the cloud so with hardware and software alone we can able to do the solutions locally but if you want to go to the globally how we can able to do means we require a cloud so now we go for the cloud solution in the cloud uh, we have we you can use your own server or you can use a third party server uh, here i am demonstrating the third party server called thingspeak uh, so this is how the thingspeak will look in the thing speak once you uh, sign up and sign in you can able to see this view in this view you can see private view or public view first before going to this view once you uh, sign into it you go to the channel create new channel once you click on the new channel it will take to this thing then go to the channel settings in the channel settings you set how many fields you have for example in our example we have two things one is a uh, buzzer and other one is a lpg gas sensor so you take two fields so for each and every field you will get a chart like this field 1 and field 2 how many times the sensor sensing buzzer etc so easily you can able to do it out you then this is very very important one call as api keys so with the help of this api keys this api keys itself will take the value from the hardware to the cloud so this api keys we should use in the arduino program sketch in arduino sketch we should use this api keys so automatically the value from that uh, a uh, microcontroller will take to this uh, cloud by using this api keys this is very very important if you give wrong api key if you uh, the, the wireless will not come to the cloud if you supply this api key third party means they can able to operate your device that's why it's, you should be very careful of giving this api keys even if you put the uh, data continuously uh, you can able to upload and you can able to download the data set here important data export you can visualize here and you can do some analyzing part in this cloud so this is the cloud part so how the data will come here means you need to connect to the wifi with the help of the wifi then it will connect here next how the uh, data is coming to the cloud now from the cloud how the data will go to the user so we require user interface that may be a website or that may be a app so now next model will be a uh, website or app so before going to the website or app now we will see the lpc gas application uh, once again Uh, we have the lpc gas detector we have taken input as npc and output as buzzer uh, local it was done to go globally uh, we are taking the cloud now so now uh, what we have done we have completed with hardware we have completed with software arduino programming sketch with the api keys we have connected to the cloud so the, now the data is coming from thing to the cloud so next we go for website or app as a user interface so this was done this was done we going for the uh, cloud as was done now the android app nowadays the android is a traditional app uh, most of the users are using android phone so instead of website we go for the android app how you can develop an android app so you can develop android studio in offline or online you can develop the mit app inventor mit app inventor android studio the both are the android development tools you can use to develop the android app this is the android studio we have the emulator where you can able to develop the tools here so once you develop the program here you require a java language to do this program whereas in arduino sketch you require c or the python so you can develop with this or this is the mit app inventor screens if you see these screens uh, the screens is easily drag and drop you can see the buttons whatever you can drag and drop in the screen and you can change the properties here depending upon your requirement you can rename or you can change the colors alignment horizontal or vertical everything can be done in this part this is the uh, dragging of the view buttons etc etc components on the screen now how the components will work you can able to do the programming here easily you can able to see here the programming as well drag and drop very easily based upon the components you have this is how the mit app inventor uh, will help us to do the programming to develop an app very quickly Uh, with the even the programming as well can be drag and drop this is the uh, components we will drag and drop and this is the code how the component should play 
so easily from here you can go put and you can download the uh, API key of the uh, thing and you can upload in the uh, Play Store. This is how we can able to develop the Android apps. Uh, so now we will see the application once again with all the features. Uh, software part has done. We taking the input and output will be the buzzer. And then locally we will control without cloud with that case will can be possible and we require uh, node MC hardware part so software once the hardware is clear software we has done with Arduino sketch and cloud cloud as well with the API keys now we have developed the website or app as well now how the message will go into the app that's the important thing now we have we have developed an app but how the message will go into the app that is the matter here so next we see how the message we go into the app we have a technology called if triple t with the help of an if triple t we can able to send a message to the mobile phone or even you can send a message to email twitter facebook or you can send a message to uh, any persons two or more persons as well with the help of a mobile phone and you can send uh, you can do a call as well to the your friends based upon the trigger this is a global attack uh, for example in the lpc gas detection if you are in home local is enough if you are out of the home at the time the gas leakage is occur means then you need, you need to get your call or a message so that you know that inside your home the gas is leaking so who, who will call and how the message will uh, go to the mobile phone means we have a technology called if this then that if this happen what action should be done if gas leakage occurs the buzzer should ring if this gas leakage occurs the message should go to the uh, customer and the uh, the the buzzer inside the home should ring it out so that's how this if triple t if this then that so we can do sms messages android phone app anything from the sensor with the help of this if triple t technology and then uh, what we need to do for here means you just go to the website and register with your gmail account and you give your mobile phone number there automatically that will be registered you will get one account in the IFTT. once you got the account you can able to get the field here how to do the actions and etc so easily you can able to select, select here sms sms like that so that easily the message will go to the mobile phone or the corresponding app wherever you want to use it out now we will see the application with all the features you check it out hardware part see local was done here with hardware and with software F to go for globally we require Wi-Fi connection with software changes cloud API keys and etc we have seen in things speak cloud platform then we have developed an Android app then we have seen how to go for the message as well we have sent the message they'll have availability now it is 100% an IOT application so with this we have developed an IOT product so like this we need to go module wise to develop an IoT product. So we have done hardware, software, cloud, Android app. Next part is testing, when the testing will come a role. So we, we have seen all the processes now. If you get any error after developing a product, then we go for the testing. In the testing we need to check it out whether is there any hardware issues and we need to cross check the hardware, the connections, the power, etc, etc. Uh, as I said, uh, the sensor require uh, 3 volts. If you supply the 5 volts means it will get burst. Whenever the sensor get burst, you can able to identify it out. But if you require 12 volts, but you have supplied only 5 volts, at that time you can't able to identify it out. Because this will not work and this will not get burst. So here you can able to not able to identify it out. So clearly that's why I recommend everybody to before using any hardware try to know how much power we need to supply it out and you supply accurately and you cross check it out uh, whether the particular sensor is working or not. Some sensors and some, control, some microcontrollers may be malfunctioned uh, at the time of developing itself. So before starting itself we should be very clear it out. I, in my YouTube channel Vikram Nirgatti, I clearly explain it about how to check whether particular microcontroller is working or not, whether the sensor is working or not. So you can subscribe to that and click on the bell icon so that you can get the notification whenever I upload a new uh, videos. So uh, my channel name is Vikram uh, Nirgatti. You can able to see more videos on IoT and machine learning deep learning as well. 
So we should be very very clear about this uh, hardware. That kind of issues will be there. Then the tracks, the tracks may be uh, overlapping, the tracks may be mismatching, and the connections may be loose. So these issues we we may we may experience while doing it out. So once you clear with the hardware part, if it's very good, then you need to select the software. Whether the pins, whatever you given, if you connected the pin to the D naught means in the program you should use D naught. You should not use D O. O and O. Most of pins will be consumed. Similarly, while entering the API keys, you should give the correct API keys. If you give the wrong API, it will not work. So you should be very clear. This kind of errors will not recognize by the compiler because within the quotation the compiler will not recognize. So human need to identify the tall things. This the thing will be done in the software part, and Wi-Fi username and the password should be correctly given, and he, always internet should be connected to it out. If there is no internet connectivity, this will not works. So this kind of things we need to mind in the software part. And cloud, inside the cloud, as I said, the API key should be perfect, and the triggering after triggering what you should do it out, how you have connected the IF triple T, these all things you need to see in the cloud. Once in the cloud side, everything is perfect. Then next thing you need to go for the Android app. Whether uh, the mobile phone at the time of installing this app is working or not, network issues. Whether you have given appropriate uh, role, uh, mobile number or not, everything will be uh, cross-checked here. Is message message is reaching correctly or not? These all things will be discussed in this Android app. And finally, the action uh, where you how the uh, you need to send. Whether it is a call or it may be a message, you need to be. Uh, very clearly staged out in the testing part by the tester. So tester requires a more skills than other hardware part. So this is how we can able to do perfect testing of an IoT product. So we have seen the different testing models. Then is deploying, marketing, and the packaging. In the deployment phase, what we will do uh, uh, before testing, the product will be get ready. We need to go for the bulk deployment. So that we need to do the PCB fabrication. To do the PCB fabrication, we have an online tool called Easy EDA, where you can able to develop the circuit design. So with the help of that circuit, easily you can able to design the track. Uh, so with that circuit, you can able to go to the uh, printed PCB bulk. Automatically with the circuit design, we will create the jumper file. So with the help of the jumper file, uh, we can able to order the PCBs in a JLC PCB online platform, or depending upon your vendors, wherever may be. Uh, this is how we do the deployment. Once you deploy, packing. So we do the casing. After, after finishing the casing and everything, we go for packing. At the packing, make sure that we need to put the uh, user manual. So that once the, the customers purchase this product, they will check the user manual. And because of that user manual, easily they can able to uh, cross check it out. Uh, this is how we do the pack packaging. In the packaging user manual, that may be with your demand, with your uh, brand, you start promoting the product in the market, start the marketing. This is how the different phases you need to go to develop an IoT product. So uh, where uh, you will get a job opportunities uh, for this in this IoT field means you may become an Android developer, you may be a hardware expert, software expert cloud analyst, cloud tools, or a tester. Like this, uh, you may become uh, any one opportunity, any job opportunities. So you you select your role, and uh, you, you analyze yourself where you have this much of skills, and you go ahead with these opportunities. Uh, so outcome of this video is I hope uh, you are capable of developing an IoT uh, product. If you have still have any queries, you can leave in the comment section. After subscribing to my channel Vikram Nirgatti, uh, you can uh, uh, click on bell icon as well for more videos in an IoT. Uh, any questions you can leave in the comment section or you can send to my uh, mail as well Vikram Nirgatti or my bell phone number. This is my YouTube channel. You can able to subscribe it out. And if you want to know about this PPT, this PPT will go to the slide share. You can download this PPT from the slide share Vikram Nirgatti. And this both YouTube link and uh, slide share link will be in my website. That is a vikramnirgatti.com. You can download from that website. Thank you. Thank you to all.